Well, this is the final episode of By Memory Inspired for the second series. I'm uh, going to be singing one of my very favorite songs, Maggie Murphy's Home. But before I do that, I have to thank an awful lot of people uh, for a, a, what's turned out to be a wonderful experience putting together what is now 30 uh, episodes uh, remotely uh, with some of my colleagues and friends and fellow musicians. And first of all, I'd like to thank uh, the Irish Arts Centre in New York and Rachel Gilkey in particular, the Director of Programming there, for inviting me to do the series in the first place. Uh, and the, gen the general idea was to do a song or uh, a set of tunes and to tell a bit of a story uh, about, uh, about the song or the tunes. And that's something that I do anyway, but nearly always in a live situation. Uh, I mean, I've done a fair bit of radio and TV over the years, but uh, never uh, remote videos uh, in, in this lockdown that we have found ourselves in. So I'd like to thank the Irish Arts Centre firstly. Secondly, I'd really like to thank all the great musicians and singers and dancers that have uh, agreed to perform with me uh, remotely. And they're all over the joint. Uh, uh, of course, uh, I'm here in Bangkok, Thailand, where I've been now in lockdown for uh, 15 months, unexpectedly, uh, and uh, have been doing these videos with uh, musicians, singers and dancers in England and in Ireland, uh, in Italy, uh, and of course, all over America. I'd like to thank them all. Love to thank my great friend, Roy Esmond. Uh, he's been essentially the producer of these series. And uh, I've known Roy forever, for well over 50 years. He used to be our photographer for the Johnstons back in the 1960s. And uh, I've known him since then. And we've stayed in touch over the years, worked on some films together indeed over the years. Did Your Mother Come From Ireland? Mostly shot in the Bronx uh, in the late 1970s. Uh, and then uh, the 20th anniversary of the Greenfields of America, mostly shot in Milwaukee at the Irish Fest there. Uh, and then uh, other movies as well. Um, the, the most, one of the most impressive, one that Roy doesn't talk about much. He doesn't really talk about his accomplishments very much. Uh, and that's the way he is. Uh, it's a, a, a wonderful movie on the songs of the First World War called When the Red Poppies Dance. But Roy uh, has essentially produced and uh, been the researcher for a lot of the, the backstories to these songs and tunes uh, uh, since we started these um, back um, in the fall of last, of last year. Um, and I'd like to thank Roy for his immeasurable contribution to this series. Also would like to thank Declan Ford. And Declan Ford is a man I've known for some years. Um, he uh, has, has many, many, many different accomplishments to his name. And I'm going to read from uh, a little book uh, that Declan produced uh, of uh, recitations and, and Christmas cards. Uh, he's a, a noted illustrator. And uh, he asked me to write the introduction to this book, which was actually, and it came along with the CD, uh, and, and it's, uh, it, it's dedicated to uh, the work of, uh, of the Mercy Centre, uh, here in Bangkok. It's a home for, for street kids and takes care of those kids in an exemplary fashion. It's the gold standard of how to take care of children who represent the poorest of the poor. And the proceeds, uh, the modest proceeds from this booklet were, were dedicated to them. And, and in the introduction, I, I, I wrote the following paragraph. Declan Ford combines many talents. He is school teacher, broadcaster, actor, musician, poet, painter and illustrator, and general savant. Above all, he is a storyteller, gifted with the ability to bring the past and the present into sharp focus with his tales of memorable local characters and their ways in and around his native county, Tyrone, which he calls quite immodestly the best county in Ireland. He grew up and lives in a townland called Ferna, not too far from the large town of Uma. He likes to be called Ford of Ferna. Well, 
when my sovereign Brenda Castles recorded the very first song, uh, Joseph Baker, a uh, song written by, by Pete Coe, about a runner uh, in the 19th century in England, a famous runner. I was talking to Declan and known his skills as, a, as, a, as an illustrator. I said, uh, kind of accidentally, I said, Declan, would you be able to, to do a sketch about a runner uh, running, uh, you know, up, up to a church? Uh, and he said, I think I would. And he did. And I loved it, and everyone seemed to love it. So I said, hey, Declan, how about doing an illustration for just every one of the songs and sets of tunes that I might come up with? And he said, I would love to do that. And he has done that. And I'm going to ask Declan to tell you himself uh, about uh, how he does these illustrations and also to recite one of his many memorable monologues. Declan Ford, Ford of Ferna. Hello, my name is Declan Ford. Uh, I am a teacher by occupation, a poet by inclination, and a pauper by circumstance. And I have been absolutely delighted and honoured to have taken part in Mick Maloney's By Memory Inspired. It has been a learning experience for me, and in these hard, difficult times of COVID. Uh, a cloud always has a silver lining and what a silver lining Mick has created. COVID art, I think he calls it, and it's, it's the, the ideal name for it, the amalgam of song, music and illustration. I've enjoyed doing the illustrations. I, I enjoyed listening to Mick's introductions and then I researched, looked for uh, illustrations of the time I tried to keep them as accurate as possible, but I, I had a great deal of fun, in particular uh, with the Kellys, uh, populating a New York street from 1910 with as many Kellys as I could possibly think of. And of course, Mother Malone, where of course the uh, Irish American has to make an appearance. Uh, we had Bing Crosby and uh, Barry Fitzgerald, of course, and Una O'Connor. And Una O'Connor. Uh, was a great Irish actress who performed in Frankenstein, the James Whale film that brought Boris Karloff to prominence. And Una utters one of the most curdling screams you'll ever hear in a black and white movie. And of course, to her, her eternal credit, where did she go to school? Well, in a place called Oma, which is my hometown. I also featured in the illustration for Mother Malone, the seminal Irish actress of the 20th century, the wonderful, the great, the unforgettable Maureen O'Hara. And I, I have written a poem about her. It's called The Man Who Loved Maureen O'Hara. And it's very much in the vernacular tradition, which is very strong here in County Tyrone. We have our own Reverend Marshall, who kept that tradition going in the mid 20th century and I like to think that I am trying to keep it going on in this century. Uh, you would be acquainted with the monologue through the work of uh, Robert Service who emigrated from Scotland to Canada and then to America. Now before I do the man who loved Maureen O'Hara a warning. Those of you who write poems will know that the one word in the English language that is virtually impossible to rhyme is orange. Well, between you and me, O'Hara runs a close second. So here's the man who loved Maureen O'Hara. I'll tell you the story of Packy McCrory, who lived near the foot of our lane. He was a pure holy Tara for Maureen O'Hara and dreaming of being John Wayne. His obsession begun in the year 61 after dandering one evening to town when he juked in from the street to the picture house heat as the rain and the sleet pelted down. There, doused in jay's fluid, fleas chomped and fleas chewed as Packy sucked on a cinnamon sweet. Warm, dry and content, it was tuppence well spent. So he settled himself down for a sleep. But he never supposed, as he snuffled and dozed, that his world would soon turn around. For like the prophet of old, he had just travelled the road towards Damascus. No, towards sweet Omi town. 
Pucky was jolted awake by a creak in his neck which snapped him out of a dream and as he opened his eyes his jaw fell with surprise as he gazed at the face on the screen. Bewitched and beguiled by her shy roguish smile Cupid pricked Pucky's heart with an arrow and he was swept off his feet in that cinema seat and fell in love with Maureen O'Hara. Clambering home by moonlight, he resolved that cold night to build a shrine to his Hollywood queen. He whitewashed his grey home and made his own white of morn, painting the door an emerald green. He was a familiar sight on his old tandem bike, traversing the rocks of our lane as he crowed in the spree as loud as could be in an accent he stole from John Wayne. For thirty-five years, Packy choked back the tears when he thought of the girl of his dreams. None else could compare with her beauty so rare. He only had eyes for Maureen. At a late evening dance, a lassie hinted romance, says the redhead, Will I see you the morrow? Packy sadly replied, a wistful look in his eye. No, you're nice, but you're no Morley, no Hara. As he draped his coat over the white marble shoulder of a Madonna in the old ruined church, a storm fizzled and blew and soaked Packy through as he shivered in his white cotton shirt. Distant relatives prayed as he lay on his bed while his life ebbed away like a stream. Tears glistened his eyes as he silently sighed and hoarsely whispered the name. Maureen. He was buried alone neath a grey granite stone, having ploughed his lonely furrow. Neath this legend and story, here lays Packy McCrory, the man who loved Maureen O'Hara. Declan Ford there from County Tyrone. Well, for the last song in this series, I'm going to do Maggie Murphy's Home, written by the great Irish Jewish songwriting duo, the first one in New York popular song of Ned Harrigan and David Braham. Now, Ned Harrigan was born on the Lower East Side in 1844, grew up there, eventually became a performer. Um, and uh, David Braham uh, met up with Harrigan. He was the conductor of a pit orchestra uh, there at the time. The whole family were musical. Originally, it come from London, where they were called Abrahams, but they dropped the A because of anti-Semitism. Harrigan teamed up with Tony Hart. His real name was Tony Cannon, Anthony Cannon. These people had come from Clare Island, the county Mayo. And starting in the 1870s in New York, the two became the most famous performers in New York City and the most beloved. They started off with Variety Theatre uh, in a theatre called the Theatre Comique down on Lower Broadway. And uh, then they started to do after pieces after the variety shows and they turned into full length productions. They took a big chance. Uh, and you had continuous action, music, song and dance woven into the action with recognisable characters. That was the beginning of musical theatre by any standards. Ned Harrigan wrote the plays, there were many of them. The Mulligan Guard series of plays, there were several, um, were the beginning of, of it all. A rapidly expanding cast of characters. David Braham and himself wrote the songs that were introduced in the plays, over 300 in all, based for the most part, an ethnic and immigrant life in working class, lower class uh, Manhattan, down on the Lower East Side. And the plays that the songs were introduced in were the Mulligan Guard series, plays like Cordelia's Aspirations, plays like Squatter Sovereignty, and uh, plays like um, Dan's Tribulations. All of these were presented in the newly improved Theatre Comique, which was built in 1881 on the corner of Waverley Place and Broadway. But tragically, in 1884, 
and a theatre burned to the ground. It was uninsured, caused financial catastrophe for the duo of Harrigan and Hart and for David Graham as well, and uh, for the audiences that loved all their productions. It coincided, unfortunately, with Tony Hart starting to go out of his mind. He was in the early stages uh, of syphilis, which was incurable at the time and often led to insanity. And finally, he did pass away in 1891 and Harrigan and himself had parted company. Harrigan continued in a new theatre, Harrigan's Theatre. and uh, But his time was starting to come to an end as the the great ethnographer, you might say, of working class life in New York. The neighborhoods were changing. Harrigan himself had moved away from the old neighborhood. Uh, he didn't understand languages like Yiddish, which was, uh, as, as Yiddish theater was developing in New York, he didn't understand it. And uh, his grasp of the realities of working class life were beginning to fade. His last big hit as a play was a play called Riley and the 400. Now, a lot of his plays were about uh, landlord-tenant disputes uh, about urban politics uh, and uh, about um, the, the differences between the classes. He always found uh, a big difference between the culture of upper-class New York and uh, and lower-class New York. And a lot of his plays were, were about class conflict, uh, mostly good-humoured plays. Riley and the 400 was one of those plays. And one of the hit songs from Riley and the 400 was Maggie Murphy's Home. And uh, Maggie Murphy was played by a young girl called Emma Pollock. And she was 15 at the time, born in the Lower East Side. And she came onto the stage and danced a jig and then launched into this song, which was a mega hit, Maggie Murphy's Home. And it captivated the audience. She had to do several encores most of the nights. Uh, it was, in a sense, Harrigan's last big hit. He wrote plays after that, but none approached the popularity. He finally passed away, surrounded by his by his adoring family um, in 1911 uh, and left an extraordinary legacy, mostly of songs. But by the time I arrived in America, his name was practically forgotten. And uh, he, he was best known, I suppose, uh, through this song, but nobody knew who it was about, written by George M. Cohen that goes, H-A-R-R-I-G-A-N spells Harrigan. Proud of all the Irish blood that's in me. Dibble a man can say a word again, me. And it's H A double R I G A N U C. Is a name that a shame never has been connected with. Harrigan, that's me. Well, that's all people knew about Harrigan when I arrived in America in 1973. Uh, and people didn't know who Harrigan was. Um, but I ended up making a couple of CDs um, with Vince Giordano and the Nighthawks, very prominent, one of the great jazz bands of our time. And one was a, 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 a CD dedicated entirely to, to the songs of Ned Harrigan and David Brain called McNally's Row of Flats. Uh, and the other was If It Wasn't For The Irish And The Jews, a nod to Irish and Jewish collaboration and competition in Tin Pan Alley. But one of my favorite songs from, from, um, from uh, McNally's Row of Flats was that last great Harrigan hit uh, about a, a widowed Irish woman and her daughter. Uh, and the widowed Irish woman was a common feature of New York life uh, in, in, the, in, in the latter decades of the 19th century. Um, a lot of the men uh, had, had died uh, through literally hard work, diseases like tuberculosis, uh, the average life expectancy at one point uh, in the 19th century for Irish men working in, in construction, canal building, railroad building was about seven years. So um, the widow woman was a, a feature of social life and Harrigan as a documenter of the, the realities of, of social life, it, he was the ultimate uh, his was the ultimate theatre of realism. He would that wouldn't have been lost in him. So Maggie Murphy, uh, Maggie Murphy's home with the the organ in the parlour representing a kind of a symbol of respectability. It's one of my favourite songs. I'd like to end the series by that. And surrounded by and accompanied by some of my favourite musicians remotely. Um, three of them are members of Vince Giordano and the Nighthawks. As Vince himself, 
uh, on the double bass and there's a uh, there's a uh, Dan Levinson and for Irish songs he likes to be known as Danny Boy Levinson Jim Fryer on the trombone our own Brendan Dolan who at times likes to play jazz as much as Irish music is on the piano and then there's Athena Turgis uh, and and uh, she's in Tuscany Italy and Hayley Richardson in North Carolina, Brenda Castles in Dublin, uh, and uh, there's uh, also Liz Hanley, who will be in, in Boston, Massachusetts. Um, and back singing, uh, a woman that during this series, I started singing with again after 51 years of a hiatus, Lucy Johnston from the, the old Johnsons uh, that I used to be a member of back in the 1960s. And we are all going to get together for a final blast in my memory inspired for this series, Maggie Murphy's Home. Beside a grammar schoolhouse, near a double tenement, I live with my old mother and always pay the rent. A bedroom and a pardon is all we call our own and you're welcome every evening at Maggie Murphy's home on Sunday night it's my delight and pleasure don't you see meeting all the girls and boys that work downtown with me I wish she were my own 